So everyone by now knows that the Tom Clancy's The Division was my guilty pleasure. Despite all the issues that it had, it was that one game that I simply couldn't put down forever. I always went back, and whether it was because my friends were playing it, or the beautiful landscapes that were created of New York, the eerie apocalyptic landscape, everything about The Division just drew me towards it. However, it's no secret that the game was riddled with bugs, hackers, cheats, you name it, it had everything. So with The Division 2, Massive set out to rewrite the wrongs, fix the netcode, fix the ability to hack and destroy the game like they did in the original, and give you a fresh new experience that was both not only streamlined and user friendly, but casual friendly as well. So this video is more of a impressions video, it's just to give you my first thoughts of it. I'm almost at level 20 now, so I thought I'd make a quick video and just give you guys my overall impression of how I'm finding The Division 2. If you don't like a cover shooter, then you're not going to like this game. This game emphasizes cover shooter to the T. It is a cover shooter, it plays a cover shooter, and it embraces a cover shooter. If you do not like a cover shooter, you will not like this game. Let me get that on the offset so you understand what this game is, so you don't waste your time with it. If you do like a cover shooter, then continue listening on. So let's start with the bad. Does the game crash? Yes it does, I had 5 crashes in about 7 hours, and by crashes, I'm talking blue screen straight to the dashboard. It does crash, I'm playing on the PlayStation 4 Pro, it does crash, 100%. Are there scaling problems? Yes there is, I've reached out to Hamish, he has assured me that a fix is being worked on, so good stuff, because the scaling problem is a massive massive deal, I'll get onto that in a bit, but moving on. Disappearing skills, you put your skill down, it disappears, you put a turret down, it fires for a bit, and then it's gone. You put your healing kit down, it's gone. There are problems there. These are real problems, they are being worked on, they will be fixed. Hopefully in the upcoming patch, or the patch after that, all of these issues will be fixed. Now, let's go through these in a bit more detail. The crashing is pretty much standard. It crashes to a blue screen, I'm not going to go any more into this. The scaling is the one that's a real problem. See, the big thing with The Division 2 was the fact that it allowed you, much like Anthem, to play with your friends and no matter what level you are. And The Division 2 does this to a very good effect, with the exception of one bug. So if you're a level 10 and you team up with a level 20, you scale up to a level 20. Well, at least your DPS does. Your damage output scales up to level 20, but your health remains at 10. Of course, because you have that level 20 in your party, when you go out into the open world, or go into missions, those enemies that are shooting you are level 20, which means your level 10 defense is going to get pretty much crushed and one shot instantly, making the experience unplayable with friends. If you're all around the same level, this works perfectly fine, but if your friends have pushed on and are disjointed in your level, it means until this fix comes in, you can't play with your friends, and that's a real shame because the Division 2 shines when you play with your friends and I do mean that it's a completely different experience there's a whole different case of you know playing with your friends having a laugh going through the missions coming up to some unexpected encounters and just all sorts of things can happen in the world of the division it's funny it's great it's entertaining but when you can't play with your friends and you're forced to play solo and you play with randoms who don't want to communicate who don't want to talk or you just go in solo, you lose that aspect of the game, and to me that's a big deal. So I'm holding off the majority of my progress because of this, so I can play with my friends, and my friends are generally doing the same. So I do hope this bug is fixed as soon as possible. The next one is the disappearing skills. This is a big problem as well, but I think is a little less of a fundamental problem than the scaling. Currently right now, if you put a skill down, there is a chance that after about five seconds, the skill will literally disappear. I mean, it just goes poop and it's gone. There's no, you know, it just magically disappears. A few moments later. I mean, so we're knelt behind the counter, looking at the enemies. We got hit once. Friend was scaled high, so we took like 99% damage. We put our med kit down the hive, started healing us after the first charge. Poop, off it went. I put my second one down. Poop. Off it went. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a problem. You don't want your skills disappearing because uh, they're your only way of recovering health. And well, GG, if they go, so do you. 
But yeah, so it's a problem, and hopefully they're going to fix that soon. On to the world. Washington, D.C. looks amazing. I didn't think they could better New York, and for the most part, I still prefer New York. I prefer the corridor-type gameplay that it provided because it just allowed for a more atmospheric environment. But this is a complete different contrast. This is open, sunny, visible, and the sun rays are just amazing. Graphically, it looks great. The visual world is fantastic. The environmental artist, again, did a fantastic job with this. Absolute credit. The environment designer for this, the person, the team that actually went and designed this and created this type, this level of detail, I would love to meet one day and just sit down and chat with them just to see what they went through, how they went through, what troubles they had to undergo, how they envisioned, how they designed the post-apocalyptic setting, how they decided to put certain vehicles here, barricades there, luggage all over the place, the foliage, everything. You know, it, it's, it's great. It's so nice to look at. And it's always been one of my greatest and most admired features of the division. The loot is supplied in a plentiful way. You never feel like you're wasting your time. You're always rewarded with loot. And the whole concept and the drive of The Division 2 is to feed you more loot. You'll never go to the forums and start saying, summon the loot, summon the loot. There's no need because you will always have loot being showered onto you. Whether you're getting the loot you want, the gear pieces you want is another matter. That requires you to go out and grind for it, right? But until you get to level 30 max level, it's pointless doing that anyway. So right now all I'm doing is just switching and leveling up. The story is nothing special. Up until level 20 now, I've been following the story. I have picked up a phone call that's littered around the world. There's a collectible that you can listen to. Aaron Keener is still around, so that is nice. He has ventured into Washington DC. But, you know, I'm still not seeing that really nice story from the Division 1 in the Division 2. It almost feels like the story in itself is a backplot to the game and the grinding and the setting and everything else in the division is at the forefront. Clans is another thing that this game has introduced. It's done a really good job. You've got your own whole section for your clans to be able to go into. It's pretty awesome. You've got different objectives to do and accolades to collect and accolades to unlock. So that aspect of it will provide countless of hours of fun. The grind is there, much like any other looter shooter, the loot is there, you've got a plethora of guns, plethora of mods that you can unlock. So all in all, as a round package, so far in my honest opinion, The Division 2 has not only had a successful launch, but is actually doing a very good job. It's improved over The Division 1 in almost every single way, and that in itself is a good thing. Now the question is, should this have been a sequel or an expansion? And honestly, with the amount of changes that's been put in place, with the amount of updates, features, and the ways things are improved, I think there's enough here, just enough, to say that this should be a sequel. And the way now that the story is driven, that even after you finish the main campaign and get access to the end game, where the Black Tusks come in, you have a whole new story, a whole new mini campaign, just there involving that aspect, which also brings in the invaded missions, brings in the world tiers, You'll meet certain NPCs that will give you bounties to go and take out certain other enemies. And defeating these give you a collectible item. You take these items, bring them back to your NPC, and so forth. There's a lot to do here, and the end game is going to blow wide open. They said they're focused on the end game more. Sadly, I can see that through the story. The story really does take second place, and for me, story campaign and lore and things like this are really fundamentally important, but I'm hoping as I progress through the story, because I'm, I'm only about 35-40% through the main campaign, but I'm hoping as I progress through that, progress through the last 60%, the story will pick up, get more interesting, and actually draw me in that bit more. We do have a lot more story coming through the end game. We have episode 1, episode 2, episode 3, but as of right now, despite the crashing, which is going to happen, it's coming out to all ISPs, and you know it's unavoidable, it's going to happen because different ISPs send packets and stuff like that in differently. So I expect there to be some crashes at launch and it didn't disappoint. 
The scaling is the big issue. I really hope they fix this because it is preventing me from playing with friends. And that's one of my biggest gripes of the game right now. The disappearing skills. Well, that's new, right? <laughs> that's new. So that's a problem, but I believe they can fix that quite easily. But ultimately, it's a good game. Is it worth your time? If you like cover shooters, absolutely. 100%. If you like The Division, 200%. If you don't like cover shooters, go elsewhere. Once I get to the end game and get to level 30 and start going into the dark zone and exploring that aspect of sides, I'll make another video covering these. So this won't be covering the dark zone. This won't be covering the end game. This video is pretty much everything I've discussed now. So the good, the bad, what it does well, what it doesn't do well. The missions are really nice, varied, interesting, dynamic. It's great. Well, I wouldn't say dynamic, but they are varied enough to make it worthwhile. The Division 1 missions were pretty samey, blandy, but in this one, they've pushed out all the stops and used all the landmarks. Whether it be the Space Museum, the National Museum, everything that's interesting in Washington DC seems to have been used as a mission base and it shows and it definitely warrants a mention because it's definitely, definitely makes the game better for what it is. And because of that, the missions are enjoyable, they're at a decent length. And what I was saying earlier, it gives rise to certain things when you're playing with friends to unexpected encounters where just enemies pop out of places you don't even expect because you don't even know there's a door there, like at the National Space Museum. Well, this is the fun things that can happen and you will get these encounters in the missions. You'll get these encounters all over the place, but it's a nice thing when it happens in missions and you're all scurrying around. Um, nothing feels spongy. Everything is within range. Everything feels good. So all in all, it gets my thumbs up. There are problems. There's always going to be problems. There is nothing that is going to be a smooth, successful launch because honestly, it's just not going to happen in the game's life service. Once it gets into the open world and different ISPs, there'll always be problems, right? This is a natural thing. So expect there to be issues. But patches are coming. They'll fix it. And these things will be forgotten before long. So to summarize, so far up until level 20, really positive, really enjoying it. Scaling is a problem. Disappearing skills is a problem. If you like cover shooters, you'll love this. If you don't like cover shooters, you won't love this. In the next video, I'll be covering the Dark Zone, Endgame, and hopefully some specific PvP. Right, until next time, agents, remain legend. <laughs>